welcome to the course on advanced machining processes. Today we are going to discuss a very important advanced machining process which is most commonly used in even small scale industries, medium scale industries as well as large scale industries that is electric discharge machining. The organization of this chapter is as follows. First, I will give you the introduction to the electric discharge machining process, then how the sparking takes place and what is the working principle of EDM process. Then, I will discuss the EDM machining machine elements or rather EDM elements which will include power supply dielectric system, workpiece and tool, servo system and tool feed system. Then we will move to the process variables, what are the pro various process variables of the EDM process, process characteristics and what are the very interesting some simple applications of electric discharge machining process and then we will move to the theory of EDM process. Let us start with the introduction of EDM that is electric discharge machining process. I have a simple question to all of you, have you ever seen that is sparking between two electrical contacts, those contacts that are in our houses, in our offices or elsewhere, they lead to loss of material from both female and, and male parts of the connections. If one can harness or control the spark, then the spark energy can be employed for constructive use that is for machining purposes in this particular reference. Now, if the discharge is submerged in dielectric, normally the dielectric used is the kerosene oil or some other oils, the energy is concentrated or can be concentrated into a small area and that small area the heat intensity of this spark is so high that you can melt and even vaporize many many materials that we know and diameter of discharge will decide what is the diameter or discharge or spark will decide what is the area where this rise in temperature is going to take place. Now, let us see very keen observations in the old USSR. Lagerenko brothers found that female and male parts of an electric switch have craters formed on it. The natural question which arose in their mind was why it is so? Can we make constructive use of this destructive phenomena or destructive activity? Both brothers studied the phenomena in detail for many years. As you can see here, Clearly, you have the male and female parts over here and black spots are there which are the burn out marks and this has the deposit of the carbon and the material has been removed from both male as well as female parts. After studying this particular phenomena of sparking in the male and female parts of the connections or switches, they tried many times to develop a machine such that it can be used for constructive purposes, especially for machining purpose. They, and finally, they got the success, they developed a machine and patented it a, a machine and they named it as electro spark machining machine, because sparking was taking place. So, they named it electro spark machining machine and later on this machine was named by various researchers 
as electric discharge machining that is EDM machine which we all know. What is the dielectric? It may be solid, it may be gas or it may be liquid. This dielectric permits the passage of lines of force of an electrostatic field, but it does not conduct the current that is electrically non conducting in general. Now, when the breakdown of voltage is reached between the two electrics which are separated by the dielectric, then sparking at a point of least electrical resistance occurs. Sparking occurs at the nearest gap or the least electrical resistance or minimum gap between the two electrics ele uh, electrodes and that discharging or sparking frequency in EDM process that we use is many thousands per second. Now, the question arises how we are going to use this dielectric and what are going to be the functions of dielectric in EDM process. It is going to perform three functions in the EDM process. It acts as a medium for discharge to take place because discharge will take place which may be arc or a spark. We do not want arc in this particular case, we always are interested in a spark. So, in that case this dielectric acts as a medium for discharge to take place. This medium or dielectric also cools the electrodes, we have two electrodes one is known as cathode that is normally the tool and another is known as anode which is the workpiece in case of EDM process. And dielectric also helps in the concentration of the spark energy in a very localized area. We will discuss it in the following slides, how this concentration takes place. Now, let us discuss working principle of EDM process that localized spark energy creates or develops very high temperature on the anode that is the workpiece and cathode that is the tool and the temperature is so high that melting and vaporization of tool and workpiece both takes place. Now, when melting takes place a crater is formed on the tool as well as on the workpiece. So, when crater is formed and if the molten material is removed from those craters then material removal takes place and by crater formation over entire workpiece surface you can remove the material from the workpiece in the desired shape and size. There is a servo system to maintain the gap between the tool and the workpiece because that maintenance of the gap is very important. So, that the breakdown voltage between the two electrodes takes place and you have the spark. The servo system moves the tool electrode that is the cathode towards or away from the work piece the electrode that is the anode. Now, let us see it, it works something like this. Here is the tool, here is the work piece and in between the two is dielectric and this is connected to the negative terminal, this is connected to the positive terminal and wherever there is a least resistance between these two a sparking takes place and due to the sparking very high temperature is created which is many thousand degree centigrade and a small amount of material is removed from the tool or melted from the tool and a larger amount of the material is melted on the workpiece. If we can flush out this molten material out from this working gap, then the crater will be formed of this nature on the tool and this nature on the workpiece. Now, if on the surface of the workpiece which is say like this and if you have thousands of crater 
over the whole entire surface and craters will be overlapping also with each other. Then whole the layer of the workpiece surface of a very small thickness is removed from here and the tool keeps moving downward. So, you reduce the thickness of this workpiece also you get the shape of the cavity on the workpiece just the replica of the shape of the tool. We will discuss more details. How sparking takes place? That is very important. Intense electrical field is developed at the narrowest gap wherever it occurs as I showed to you there. The main thing is if you see the surface of the work piece then you will find that peaks and valleys are there on the work piece surface throughout the whole surface. Same way if you see the surface of the tool again you will find peaks and valleys are there on the surface of the tool also and wherever there is a minimum gap between the tool and the work piece surface here this gap is between this as well as this one then a sparking will take place at this particular point and that sparking will create the crater on the tool as well as the crater on the work piece surface. So, the negatively what happens when that sparking takes place then negatively charged particles that are electrons detach from the cathode and move towards the anode that is the work piece while positively charged ions move towards the cathode that is the tool and they form a conducting column of the particles in the inter electrode gap. How is sparking takes place? Let us go further. Electrons collide with the neutral molecules of the dielectric because this gap is filled up with the dielectrics. So, when electrons they detach from the tool that is the cathode, they come and strike the molecules of the dielectric and then dissociation of the molecules of the dielectric takes place or ionization takes place and that leads to formation and ion formation of the molecules of the dielectric. Then electrons move towards the work piece which is positively charged and ions move towards the tool that is negatively charged. Narrow channel consisting of continuous conductivity that is plasma channel is formed between the anode and the cathode. So, as a result of that wherever that is sparking is taking place a narrow channel of the continuously conducting particles is formed and this consists of ions as well as electrons over there. Momentary current impulse discharge or spark takes place. Once that column is formed then it works as a continuously conducting channel and the current flows for a short duration of period depending upon the pulse on time. So, a spark energy that is due to the continuous column plasma column formed over there a spark energy raises temperature of both the electrodes to the extent that melting and vaporization in a very small area of both electrodes takes place. Here this picture tells you what I have explained there on the board. You can see here in this picture that tool electrode is there which is negatively charged work piece is positively charged and electrons that is here they are coming striking with the molecules of the dielectric and it dissociates into the ions and electrons and you can see here these ions are moving towards the tool and electrons they are moving towards the work piece. Now, the velocity with which electrons are moving towards the work piece is very close to the velocity of the light. However, the mass of the electrons is negligible, but because of this high very high velocity the kinetic energy of these electrons that is half m b square is so high that they are able to raise the temperature of the work piece to a high value. 
and both the electrodes that is cathode and anode are connected towards the pulsed DC pulsed direct current source. Now, this is what I have drawn there you can see this is the molten metal a small crater is formed on the tool and larger crater is formed on the workpiece because the energy released on the workpiece is much higher than the energy released by the ions on the tool. And you can see here is the ionized column that is shown as diameter of the spark and this is normally 100 to 100 to 200 micron uh, normally 100 to 200 micron depends upon the machining parameters and the dielectric characteristics. Now, surrounding to this there will be some vapors of the dielectric then you will have the dielectric itself. So, Lajrango brothers observe of USSR observed the loss of material from anode and cathode that I have already mentioned to you and they were forced to make use of this destructive phenomena of an electric spark to the constructive use in the form of first EDM machine. It works on thermoelectric erosion effect as I have just explained to you in my earlier slide that thermal erosion of the tool as well as thermal erosion of the workpiece is taking place craters are being formed and when these craters are formed over the whole surface then you finally get the desired shape in the size because tool is being continuously moved. So, the material from the workpiece is being continuously removed. However, note it that some material is being removed from the tool also and really speaking we do not want that the material should be removed from the tool, but it is a part of the uh, phenomena or part of the process we cannot get away with this. So, researchers have tried to minimize the wear of the tools so that the shape and size of the tool does not change substantially during the EDM process. Breakdown of dielectric at predetermined electric field of dielectric usually kerosene is used as the dielectric, but in some cases like wire electric discharge machining which we will discuss later water is always used uh, deionized water is always used as the dielectric it takes place between two electrodes tool and the workpiece and dielectric ionization takes place because molecules that is electrons from the cathode collide the molecules of the dielectric they split into ions and electrons which I have explained to you ions move towards the cathode and electrons move towards the anode. A electrons hit the anode and not the cathode and ions hit the cathode and since the velocity of the ions is much smaller than the velocity of the electrons. However, the mass of the ions is much larger than the mass of the electrons, but total energy carried by electrons is higher than that carried by the ions that is why the rise in temperature or removal of the material from the workpiece is much larger than the removal of the material tool that is the cathode. Due to their kinetic energy they produce heat on cathode less and more on anode. This heat melts and even vaporizes a small part of cathode and comparatively larger part of anode. This shows various elements of an EDM machine that is electric discharge machining machine. Now, you can see here there is a DC pulse generator which creates the pulses of the electric voltage and then you have the servo system control that controls the gap between the tool and the workpiece to servo system is responsible to maintain this particular gap more or less constant in a very narrow range. Then there is the tool feed system uh, basically the servo motor or servo system gives the feed to the tool. Now, depending upon if this gap is large then tool will be moved towards the workpiece 
if this gap is smaller than the required one then the tool will move away from the workpiece and this function is performed by the servo system you can see here dielectric fluid is there and the enlarged view of the inter electrode gap between the tool and workpiece is shown over here tool is there workpiece is there and dielectric is there between the two and you can see the ionized fluid which has the electrons as well as the ions and the gap between the tool and the workpiece is indicated as IEG that is inter electrode gap this is the abbreviation for inter electrode gap IEG. Now, if you come back again here uh, you have the fixture which is holding the workpiece and the workpiece is connected to the positive terminal of DC pulse generator that is it becomes anode. So, what does it mean really that workpiece is connected to the positive terminal of the DC power supply. This simply tells that the workpiece has to be electrically conducting. If workpiece is not electrically conducting then this becomes the limitation of this particular process that you cannot machine that particular workpiece or that particular material with the help of the EDM process. So, it uh, from this we can also conclude that all the workpieces which are to be machined by EDM process should have certain minimum electrical conductivity otherwise they cannot be machined or in other words you can say that electrically non conducting materials or insulators cannot be machined by EDM process. Now, dielectric plays very important role and you can see the gap between the tool and the workpiece is filled with the dielectric. So, when this dielectric that is filled in the tank it um, uh, you can see its path the pump pumps the dielectric from the tank to the filter and the filter takes away the debris or the residues which are added to the dielectric in the dielectric tank or the machining area they are filtered out and then again dielectric is supplied to the tank. Now, there are various ways how you supply the dielectric to the tank and first and foremost condition is that dielectric should reach to the inter electrode gap as you can see here on the right hand side if dielectric is not there then some part of dielectric that means liquid and some part of air will be there which may not function very well. But the workpiece you are going to get is going to be the replica of the tool. Now, electric discharge machine you can see there are two polarities shown over here. I have mentioned to you in the earlier discussion that tool is cathode and workpiece is anode and that polarity is known as normal polarity, but under certain combination of the tool and workpiece material it is found that reverse polarity performs better than the normal polarity. In case of reverse polarity tool is made anode that is connected to the positive terminal and workpiece is made cathode connected to the negative terminal. Now, when you connect the tool and the workpiece to the pulse power supply what is happening to the current and voltage pulses. Let us see here this is the voltage pulses. Now, this is the off time and this is the on time. Now, in the on time there are two divisions one is shown over here that is around 1 microsecond and rest is the there. So, this portion is known as ignition delay time and this is the one where really sparking is taking place and you can see here during this period erosion over this time takes place and here is the current pulse because during ignition delay time there is no flow of the current, but during this particular period flow of the current is taking place or ignition period uh, ignition delay uh, sorry uh, during the ignition or sparking only the current is flowing off time there is no flow of the current. So, this indicates that really material removal takes place only in this period not in this period no uh, in this period there is no removal of the material 
that is the ignition delay time. So, you can see the difference between the voltage pulses and the current pulses. Now, in today's pulse power supply or pulse generator, the peak current is very very high compared to really what you want for melting and vaporization of many materials. And you can see here as shown over in this figure that peak current can be as high as 1000 ampere which is really much larger than what you really need. So, although these are there, but with the help of the modern pulse generator you can current uh, control the peak current also. Now, supply of the dielectric in the inter electrode gap is very important and there are various ways by which you can supply the dielectric between the tool and the workpiece that is the inter electrode gap. Let us see there. One is through suction, uh, suction through tool or workpiece, pressure through tool or workpiece, jet flushing, rotating disc electrode, alternating forced flushing. Now, let us see the figures. Now, if you see these figures, figure A is the suction through the electrode, dielectric is being supplied from the side over here and it is sucked through the electrode and the electrode that is the tool and it has the hole in the center of the tool. So, that dielectric will come this way and it will be sucked inside the tool through the tool. Now, in the second case that is suction through the workpiece you are supplying the dielectric from the sides and then it is being sucked through the hole in the workpiece and this is the workpiece and this is the tool. Third case is pressure through the electrode you apply or supply the dielectric at high pressure through the hole in the center of the tool normally it is in the center of the tool and then that dielectric comes and it goes through the sides or the gap between the outer surface of the tool and inner surface of the machine hole. You can uh, in the next case that is the pressure through the workpiece again in place of coming through the tool you can supply at a high pressure the dielectric through the hole in the workpiece and then the dielectric will go or come out from the sides. And the commonly used is the one which is known as jet flushing. Here you are supplying the dielectric at a high pressure through the jet and that forces the dielectric to come between the tool and the workpiece. Whole of the system is immersed in the tank of the dielectric. So, supplying the dielectric through the jet becomes comparatively more effective than other means. Now, the last one is through vibration of the electrode what you can do that uh, whole of this system is kept inside the tank which is filled with the dielectric and you vibrate the tool at a high frequency. So, due to the pushing up and down the pumping of the dielectric takes place in the inter electrode gap and that flushes out the dielectric and brings in the fresh dielectric in the inter electrode gap. So, that debris are removed out and fresh electro fresh dielectric is continuously fed in in the inter electrode gap. So, there are various uh, these six ways are there other ways also can be developed by combination of these or a new method can be developed. One of them is as I have mentioned in the earlier slide that uh, rotating the die uh, rotating the electrode. Suppose you are trying to remove the material with the help of a rotating electrode that is the cathode here and this is the workpiece here. If you are rotating this then due to the rotation it will suck the dielectric in the inter electrode gap and that dielectric will help in generation of the sparks 
between the two that is the rotating disc and the work piece and you will be able to remove the material and you will be able to cut it in two parts or create a slot or cavity whatever you like. So, there are various ways and one has to opt most suitable method for a particular case because in many cases you may not be having the hole in the work piece. So, you cannot use the method that is B and D you are left with the hole in the tool. Now, if the size of the tool is sufficient enough then you can use A or C and you have to decide what should be the size of the hole in the tool. If size of the tool is very very small then really you cannot drill the hole so easily. So, you will not be able to use these two methods also then you are left with the option that is shown here E or F. Now, depending upon the size and other constraints you have to opt either E or F. So, my recommendation is that depending upon the situation you decide which method you should use for the supply of the dielectric in the inter electrode gap. The source is the book on advanced machining processes. RC pulse generator, I will discuss this RC pulse generator probably in the third lecture, today is the first lecture on EDM. Now, it gives low material removal rate, it has long idle time and short spark time. Idle time I have shown to you sometimes back in the I think two slides back where it was 1 microsecond and in RC pulse generator that is resistance capacitance pulse generator this is little longer than really uh, 1 microsecond, but the surface finish better surface finish is obtained with the help of RC pulse generator compared to modern pulse generator, but material removal rate is low. High tool wear rate in case of RC pulse generator it attains high P current and then high rate of decline of the current. So, it produces very high temperature which is not really needed. In case of RC pulse generator if the P current is very very high then the temperature rise of the electrodes is very high which is really not needed and if that temperature rise is very high it may damage the tool as well as the work piece just like it may create uh, large amount of thermal residual stresses, micro cracks and other defects. Thermal damage to the work piece as well as the tool something like micro cracks may happen, heat affected zone may be large also recast layer may be large. So, you should have controlled pulse generator overcomes this problem. It enables to select rough machining that is high energy and low frequency or finished machining condition that is low energy and high frequency please correct it. In case of finishing condition it will be low energy and frequency will be high. So, with the help of modern pulse generators you can select either finishing condition or rough machining conditions depending upon your work piece requirement which you are machining. Now, let us discuss what are the various elements of EDM machine. There are the four basic major elements of any EDM machine. One is the power supply, another is the dielectric system, third is the electrode that is the tool and work piece and fourth is the servo system which is controlling the gap between the tool and the work piece. Let us discuss little more details about the power supply. Let us take the first element of the EDM machine that is the pulse power. 
it solid state rectifier is used to convert alternating current that is AC power supply into DC power supply because yeah. most of the places we have AC supply, but we want pulsed DC power supply for that purpose solid state rectifier can be used. Then you have RC pulse generator that converts direct current power into the pulsed direct current power. In place of RC pulse generator you can use other pulse generators also that are available in the market, but RC pulse generator was the first one which was used in the initial EDM machines. Then we use transformer that converts high voltage supply to low voltage higher current supply because normal supply of the power is at 220 volts in India and uh, in the EDM we do not need more than 100 volts. So, transformer is used to reduce the voltage from 220 to the 100 or lower than that. So, we have the transformer which can give 0 to 100 or 0 to 120 volts uh, for EDM machine. Also another thing is this should be able to give higher current, current required is normally higher in case of EDM. Then you have high power pulsed output that produces sparse between the two electrodes that is the anode and the cathode. For a given voltage sparking takes place at or below a minimum gap that is what I had explained here that is the minimum gap between the two lengths of work piece where the sparking takes place. EDM power supply signals in the gap are fed to the servo system that controls the gap value because once the material is being removed from the tool as well as the work piece then the gap between the two will keep increasing, but we should maintain a certain minimum gap so that the sparking takes place at the pre-decided value and that work is performed by the servo system. Power supply also controls electrical parameters such as voltage V, current I, pulse duration, duty factor, frequency and polarity. We will discuss about the duty factor this is nothing but the on time divided by on time plus off time and this plays an important role this is the duty factor. We will discuss it later on in detail. Power supply is equipped with cut off protection circuit that activates automatically in case of over voltage or over current in the inter electrode gap. If there is over current in the inter electrode gap then it may damage both tool and work piece and we do not want either of the two to get damaged. So, there is a protection that if the current reaches above x value then it will automatically cut off and give the signal that there is something wrong in the system that is why over current is there or some machine they may have the arrangement that they will rectify or they will correct the situation automatically. Now in case of over current in the inter electrode gap in this case power supply is cut off automatically before the electrodes get damaged. Now second element of the EDM machine is the dielectric system. Elements of dielectric, dielectric system itself has many elements, sub elements rather that is the dielectric fluid, reservoir, filters that we have seen in one of the diagrams, pump and the delivery device. Now, let us see little more details of each of these in the following slides. Now, before I discuss that let us see which is the good dielectric fluid. So, the liquid 
or even the gas which you are going to use as the dielectric should have certain properties to be used as the dielectric in EDM process. So, good dielectric fluid should possess the following properties. It should have, have high dielectric strength, it should have minimum possible ignition delay time because in the ignition delay time there is no flow of the current, no removal of the material. So, it really adds to the off time that means the time during which no machining is taking place. So, we want this to be minimum possible and minimum deionization time because when ionization has taken place like here the ionization has taken place. Now, once unless it deionizes another spark will not be there. So, once it deionizes then again the ionization will take place. So, that deionization time should be as low as possible and the dielectric should be effective coolant also. So, that the temperature of the tool and the workpiece does not keep increasing continuously otherwise the control material rumor will not be there because we want high temperature only in a very very narrow localized area and this will be possible only when the dielectric functions as the effective coolant and high degree of fluidity. This is again very important point that the dielectric should have high degree of fluidity because you are going to machine the components which have complex shapes and when they have the complex shape and the gap between the tool and the workpiece is very very small few hundred microns. In that particular case if dielectric is not able to flow into those narrow complex areas then machining will not take place from there and if machining does not take place uh, from those narrow areas then you will not get the desired shape and size of the workpiece. So, fluidity of the dielectric is very important. Some of the fluids that can be used as dielectric are transformer oil, paraffin oil, lubricating oil, kerosene. Now, nowadays especially in case of biridium process deionized butter is commonly used as the dielectric. The specialty of deionized butter is that it gives higher material removal rate, but at the same time it also gives high tool wear rate which we really do not want. We want as low as possible tool wear rate. Then another big point or limitation of this deionized butter is that it is corrosive in nature which corrodes the workpiece and this is undesirable feature of deionized water as dielectric, but it works very good coolant. Now, it is basically used in case of wire EDM. Now, most of the manufacturers of EDM machine these days they are developing their own dielectric and normally they do not tell the composition of those dielectric they patent them and they supply those dielectric along with their machines and whenever you want to you you want to purchase the dielectric you have to purchase from the manufacturer or their supplier or their agent of that particular machine. So, but those dielectrics have some specific qualities also which are good because they have developed those dielectrics after lot of research activities in their own companies. Air is also getting attention of researchers because it is environment friendly and many researchers are trying to use air as the dielectric because I mentioned in the beginning that dielectric can be solid, it can be liquid, it can be gas also. So, because air is easily available in the environment it does not cost much to you because it may cost little bit for dehumidifying and other things, but otherwise its cost is almost nil. And so, people are trying to use air as the dielectric especially nowadays there is lot of talk, lot of work going on on in environment friendly machining 
or green manufacturing. So, under that category lot of research is going on how to use air as an efficient dielectric. Effective flushing we have already discussed various ways six different ways of supplying the dielectric to the inter electrode gap. Now, what the flushing does in the inter electrode gap or in the machining zone? It removes by product from the gap that are formed by products include the reaction products that are formed in the machining zone. Also, the molten material that gets solidified in the form of the globules they have to be removed from the gap otherwise machining will halt uh, and also various kind of gases are evolved because temperature is very high. So, dielectric itself will get vaporized also part of molten material may get vaporized. So, these gases are also to be removed from the inter electrode gap. So, all these reaction products should be efficiently effectively removed from the machining gap otherwise machining will be slow. And because of effective flushing or removal of these by products from the gap as fast as possible you will get higher material removal rate and better surface finish. Because once these reaction products or whole lot of that particular dielectric is removed and replaced by the fresh dielectric then definitely it will have higher dielectric strength and higher dielectric strength means higher energy in each spark and if energy in each spark is higher then definitely it is going to give you higher material removal rate. Now, better surface finish will depend upon what is the size of the spark or the crater being formed is smaller the size of the crater better will be the final surface roughness, but if material removal rate is very high that means larger crater is being formed then you will not get a better surface finish unless material is removed in a different fashion that means crater size is small, but large number of craters are formed every second then material removal rate will be higher and you will you can get better surface finish. It avoids short circuits due to the absence of residues between the tool and the workpiece because if dielectric is not there then definitely uh, two electrodes will touch each other and short circuit will take place and that is the situation we do not want. Another possibility of short circuit is that if the debris that is the molten material which has got solidified remains in the inter electrode gap and thus uh, they form a layer or they are of larger size or the size larger than the inter electrode gap then definitely short circuit is going to take place. However, as I have mentioned in the earlier slide there are the protection made in the today's EDM machine because of which before really short circuit takes place they will stop the supply or the servo system will move the tool up away from the workpiece. So, that short circuit does not take place. Now, when you are making the hole in the tool for the supply of the dielectric in the inter electrode gap then what is happening as you see in this particular figure that dielectric is being supplied from here there is no cathode or no metal over there. So, material removal from this area is almost negligible unless this area moves up and it comes in contact or opposite to the walls of the tool of the hole made in the tool and so this is spike formation takes place and this is spike is not this is spike is undesirable on the machine work piece. So, there is a solution for minimizing the size of this spike or even completely eliminating the spike formation in place of having a single hole in the center of the tool but one can do that say this is the tool then in place of one you equalize the area of single large hole into four small holes and put them away from the center 
and if you rotate this tool that is the cathode as shown here rotation then what Uh, dissolve or melt it out because immediately after that you will find that metal is there which will melt out or sparking will take place on those spikes and once the sparking takes place against the spike then that material will get melted or vaporized and will get removed. This is how you can really uh, remove the spike formation. So, flushing through a hole in the tool results in spike formation as I have explained here this is the spike and it can be avoided or eliminated by rotating a tool with eccentric holes here I have shown four eccentric holes and if you are using this these holes are for the supply of the dielectric and they will supply the dielectric of the same quantity as you are supplying here through the single hole. Now, in certain cases jet flushing is less effective. Some dielectrics are inflammable this is another problem that dielectrics are inflammable work piece is immersed in dielectric and it minimizes its chance of fire, but still many cases have been reported that dielectric especially the kerosene caught fire and damaged the work machine. Arts are undesirable we are always interested in having the spark rather than the arts because if arts are there then they are going to damage tool as well as workpiece both. So, it is caused due to the concentration of the debris in the inter electrode gap if there is the concentration of the debris in the inter electrode gap that will lead to the formation of the arc which we should avoid that is why the flushing or supply of the dielectric and flushing of the dielectric effective flushing of the dielectric is very important to avoid this arcing. It requires proper filtration also of the dielectric before resupplying the dielectric that is very important. 